this video here to show you what the IB Biology program is all about. We're going to look at the content as well as what kind of internal and external assessments that you'll be exposed to. So starting here with this IB new curriculum for bio, it has four themes, unity and diversity, forms and functions, interactions and interdependence, and continuity and change. Now, in these four sections, of course, there are subsections. For example, in the theme A, there is A1 all the way to 9. And you can see that it has a diverse of content, such as water, nucleic acid, to classification cladistics, which is only for HL. So every time you see a bracket of HL, that is basically just for the HL students, as else you don't have to touch. However, as a reminder that in the other subtopics, there might be some extra information that is just for the HL students. Here it goes for the theme B, which is forms and functions. You can see it goes from B1 to B10, and it has everything from carbs and lipids and proteins all the way to muscles and motility, adaptations of environments, and so forth. On theme C, we have interactions and interdependence. So it's all about how things are interacting with each other's organisms interacting or organs are interacting with each other or pathogens against human bodies, whatever it is, is the interactions between them. So we have from C1 to C9, and in these topics, it's all basically related to metabolisms and at the same time, how things are interacting with each other. Then you have the last theme, which is the D1, which is continuity and change. And you have from D1 all the way to D10, like DNA replication, protein synthesis, water potential, reproduction. So it's a huge list. Now, these are the four themes that IB has for IB Bio, reminding you that some sections are just for HL. Now, let's talk about the external assessments. When it comes to external assessments, there is two. There's paper one and paper two. Those are two tests that will be happening in the end of your program, be it in May or in November. Now, if you look here at paper one, paper one, it's 36 percent and paper two is 44 percent. If you notice, this makes 80 percent of your grade, which is only going to be basically graded in the end of the program. So basically throughout the two years, you're just taking those tests and contents in order to learn so you can get those official exams, which is paper one and paper two. Then it comes the other 20%, and that's the one that is an internal assessment that depends on your teacher. She might be teaching you to do a certain lab report on the first year or in the second year. That 20% is basically a scientific investigation in which you are coming up with an idea and you are doing the experiment and then you're writing a lab. The good news is that you can be now in groups and help to each other. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later on. Now, let's understand something about IB grades. When it comes to IB bio by itself, if you're an SL student, again, you might get a two in IB bio, but an overall grade of the IB diploma, if you're getting above 23, 24, you passed. However, when it comes to an HL student doing a bio, you have to get a three. If you get a two, not only do you fail the IB bio program, but you fail the entire IB bio diploma. I mean, the IBV diploma. So for it's important that in either cases, you have to get above three. But I guarantee you with the IB, you will get a six and seven with me, for sure a seven, if you just follow the instructions. All right, so let me give you a little bit of a scope of the range of grades here. So here we have basically showing the grades and it's showing on a time zone too. So there's different time zones. There's zero, one, and two. And that depends on where you are in the world. So there is three different types of tests, although they might be a little bit similar to each other with some questions, but there'll be three tests around the world. So that means three papers, paper ones to spread, and then paper twos. Now, in there, of course, they're going to look at the students and see their performance. And according to their performance, that's where they create the ranges from one to seven knowing here that if you get 74 points up to 100, anywhere in between this, you are a seven. But once again, that's 74 points, it's paper one, paper two, and your lab report that you're sending to IB. So together, you're getting points out of those guys. If you get above 74, then you are a seven. This is in the case of an HL situation. Now, if you look at the SL situation, it will be a little bit different. If you look at seven, it will be 79 points for you to get an basically a seven in the SL. So this is a range that does change from year to year, depending on the performance of the students on their paper one and paper two. 
But I'm telling you from now that most of these changes are usually four to five points, sometimes just one or two points. They don't change that much. So don't expect a drastic change. There will be not a drastic change of 10, 20 points. It's not. So this is the range in which you're getting from one to seven. Now let's talk about their tests. How does these tests compose? The first one is paper one right here. So paper one has two sections. You have section A, which is about 40 multiple choice. Those 40 multiple choice can be about any of the topics that you have from team A all the way to team D. And of course, but these are for the SL students, so it can only be content about SL. So for every multiple choice, there is a point. So you can see there is 40 points there. Then on the section B of paper one still, there will be four questions. Now, what are these four questions? These four questions will be related to the experiments that you've done in class. So you really have to focus on the experiments. What exactly do you focus on these experiments? You focus on the dependent, the dependent, what kind of equipment you're using, how to use the equipment, how to assess to graphs and analysis of it, and not counting conclusions and evaluations. So it is very important that for you to take those labs seriously because, again, four questions will be based on the labs that you did in class, and that will be around 15 points. So you can see paper one has about 55 points, and you have an hour and a half to conduct the entire paper. There's no gaps and stops, time out between them. You have to go through it all at once in that one hour and a half. That's for paper one. Now, reminding that this again is one percentage, right? Which is about 36. Paper two, which is 44% of your grade, that has two sections too. But one of the first section is data analysis or database questions. And that will be graphs about some related topic that you have learned. And there will be some questions under that data. It could be a graph, it can be a table with data, it could be a drawing with the data, and then they have like A, B, C, D questions about it. You will see in this video a little bit more examples of that. And then there'll be short answer questions. Now in these short answer questions, these will be questions related to the topic. There is no graphs and data. It's just short answer questions asking about the content that you learned throughout the themes. Then it comes the other section of the paper two, which is basically an extended response questions. This is usually a little bit more in depth. That means there will be two options for you. And in these two options, you choose, if you choose this option, there's an A, B, C questions. And you have to answer from A to C fully to get those points. Now, together, the data analysis and short answer questions and the extended response, these give you 50 points and you have about one hour and 30 minutes also to conduct. And remember, there's no gap time out between them. You have to do the entire thing within one hour and 30 minutes. The good news is that these both papers, you can use calculators. So that was the standard. Now let's talk about the high level students. You also have paper one and two. In paper one, you also have 40 multiple choice with 40 points for one point for each, of course. And you will have a section B, which is a four questions. However, in those four questions, you will notice here that there is 35 points. SL only had 15 points, HLs have 35. So there's more questions related to the labs that you're doing. And obviously there will be more labs for the HL students. So it's important that you stay focused on these labs. And you can see that the time is extended. It's gonna be two hours for paper one. Paper two, you are also gonna have database questions with graphs and analysis. You also gonna have short questions related to the topic. Most likely those short questions will be related to the HL content, not the SL. Although they might put some SL, but it's mostly HL. And then out of three extended response, you have to choose two. Not like SL, which was out of two, they have to choose one, you as an HL. If there is three, you have to choose two and answers A, B, C, and A, B, C fully to get the points. And if you notice, we're talking about 80 points compared to the SL was 50. So that's 30 points. And because of that, you can easily see that you have two hours and 30 minutes to go through the entire test. And there is no break in between. You have to go through fully. The good news again, you still can use the calculators on both tests.
So let me show you some examples of what it looks like, paper one and paper two, for you to be a little bit exposed to it, because it's important that you know what it looks like. It takes away the anxiety and makes you calm. So here's an example of a section A on paper one. You notice there's multiple choices with A, B, C, and D. So they will give you a certain content, and then they will give you four options, and you have to choose one of them. That's paper one. If you go to paper one, section B, if you notice here, which it has to do with labs. In this case, it's a data showing about lipase, which is an enzyme. And of course, you're gonna have an enzyme lab. So they can give you data about a lab that was conducted and telling you, can you explain some questions here? Like, what are you seeing on the graph? Or what can you deduce from the graph? Or identify a certain thing. So basically, anything related to your labs will be on this section. There's a continue here to show an example for an HL student. So for example, you have the portometer here, which it has to do based with plants. So they might put an experiment of our plants and have questions again coming related to it. Then you go to paper two. When it comes to database, you can see here it can be a graph with some short answer questions. Also here on another table with questions. So it's much of graphs and tables in which you have to analyze them and be able to answer them. Then you go to the short answer questions. As you can see, these ones usually have to do more with the contents. Like this one is asking between the chromosomes of prokaryotics and eukaryotics, which is a content formation. The next one is talking about sickle cell anemia, which is a content. So it'd be short answer questions. And usually there's like two points, three points and so forth. Then you go to continue again with more questions. They can give you the karyotyping. And if you notice one point, so usually these are between one to three points pushing five points, but it's between one to three points, most of these questions. Then you come to the extended response. Now here is where you get most of the points. Now this is an example showing for the HL students. There you can see here that there is three sections. In these three sections, you don't have to answer all of the three. You go through those three and you find out which ones you wanna do. How do you know this? You look at the points here, as you can see the points, these will tell you which one is the best to choose. So for instance, if you're doing, if you're an HL student and you're doing these guys, you look at the first one and you notice that mm, out of three points, I know two, this one I know four, this one I know two. Then here, I probably know four, I know four, zero. And here I know three, I know five, and I know two. So which questions, which section is it? Is it five, six, or seven that you're gonna choose? You have to choose two out of one. If you're an SL, you have to choose one out of two. So you count the points. So if you look at this, overall, this all together will give you eight points. This will give you eight points, and this will give you 10 points. So which one you would choose? Obviously, for sure, you're gonna do seven because you know you can get just 10 points, right? But between six and five, it doesn't matter because both of them are eight points. Choose any of those. So this is how you calculate to make sure you're getting the best points out of it. Now, when it comes to internal assessments, here's important to know, it's a lab report and it can only have 3000 words. It's limited to 3000 words, okay? It should take you around 10 hours, but we all know it's gonna take more than 10 hours. And again, it's about 20% of IB grade, which is this test, this lab, sorry, is sent all the way to the IB examiners like me, who look over, read it over, grade it up and everything. But it can also be graded by your teacher who's doing the first estimate of what you think your IB grade will come out of this. So in the end, what are the requirements for this investigation that you're doing? The good news is that you can do up to three people. So it doesn't mean that all of you three will have exactly the same lab report, no. You, all of you could be working on the same plant, but one is manipulating the temperature, one is manipulating the wind, and one is manipulating the CO2 or whatever it is. But you guys can have a methodology that is very similar with some tiny changes. You can have a background very similar with some tiny changes. Your research questions will have to be different, obviously. And of course, when you get the results will be a little bit different. But what happened is you guys get the chance to cooperate and help each other throughout the process. Now, what is this lab made of? This lab has a research design, which is six points, a data analysis, which is six points, conclusion, which is six points, and an evaluation six, which is 24 points. 
So your lab is up to 24 points. Now there will be a section, video section, which is related to all these scientific investigations. Then we're gonna go very much in details how to make sure you get that seven in the lab. So this is what the IB Biology program is about. On the next video, I'm gonna talk about pathways and how to learn the subtopics because there's two pathways that you can learn. So reminding you right here that with NAIB, you really can get that seven. Trust me on that. See you in the next video.